A New York Times investigation is casting doubt on Donald Trump's claim that he's an expert dealmaker and businessman. Journalists for the newspaper obtained tax information that shows that Trump lost more than a billion dollars back in the 80s and 90s. The tax information covers the years from 1985 to 1994. It shows his core businesses, casinos, hotels, and retail space in apartment buildings ran up $1.17 billion in losses. In fact, the Times says Trump lost more money than any other individual American taxpayer during that time. The losses Trump suffered allowed him to avoid paying taxes for eight out of those 10 years. For more, we're now joined by Suzanne Craig. She is one of the journalists who broke this story for the New York Times. So Suzanne, can you tell us what you've discovered? Sure, we looked at the years that you mentioned from 85 to 94, and in each of those years, he lost money, tens of millions, sometimes hundreds of millions of dollars. And what's interesting about this, you know, when you think back to Donald Trump's history as a businessman, the years you think, he probably would be doing well. There's some in there. I never would have thought he would have lost money every year. 85, 86, 87, he was buying stuff. 1987, he wrote Art of the Deal, his Master of the Universe memoir about deal making. That year, his core businesses lost $42.2 million. So it's just incredible to see these tax losses year after year. Um, and it's not just, you know, these were you know, normal business losses. You know, we, look, we were able to compare it to, to data of similar people, and it showed he had greater losses than pretty much anybody in America for most of the years. I mean, that's really quite the statement, right, in terms of the it's picture. An, it's that, incredible, yeah. Yeah, so tell us more. Yeah. But what, what kind of picture does your story, do you think, paint of how the president managed his businesses during that time period? Well, he, he, he managed them poorly. To, to, it's probably an understatement. I mean, a lot of people know about the casinos from you know 1990, and they went bankrupt. And his troubles in that period, he was a horrible businessman, and they went bankrupt. Um, what's interesting, though, about this is those earlier years where you thought he was probably doing well, but in fact, he wasn't. So, in a previous report, you anonymously obtained parts of the president's taxes yeah. as well. So, how does this compare to what you've already uncovered? Well, we see in the, in, 19, in the 1995 tax return, and that was mailed to me in 2016 in the final days or weeks of the, the election campaign, we saw on that tax return that by 1995 he had what's known as a net operating loss of almost a billion dollars. And what that is, it shows his cumulative losses and it allowed him to shelter taxable income going forward. It's sort of like a gift card. You can have a billion dollars in taxable income going forward. You don't have to pay income tax on it. These numbers very much, they come before that and very much build into that. We just now can see year by year where the losses were. We thought most of them were probably going to be 91, 92, 93. We now know they extend at least back to 1984, probably before, but because of, we have information from 85 that extends to 84, we know at least from 84 to 95 he was losing money every year and paid income mm -hmm. tax in only two of the 10 years that we saw. Okay, I wanna get your thoughts on how the president responded to your story on Twitter. This is what uh, he had to say. He said, real estate developers in the 1980s and 90s, more than 30 years ago, were entitled to massive write-offs and depreciation, which would, if one was actively building, show losses and tax losses in almost all cases. Much was non-monetary, sometimes considered tax shelter. You would get it by building or even buying. You always wanted to show losses for tax purposes. Almost all real estate developers did and often renegotiate with banks. It was sport. Additionally, the very old information put out is a highly inaccurate fake news hit job. What do you make of Donald Trump's reaction? Well, I'll deal with that in two parts. We talk in the story about depreciation. There's no question he had some. It's a fraction of what the, lo the, the losses are so big, like they're not, there's no way you can account for depreciation up to that. These were massive business losses that you can see in public records that were going on. He had some depreciation and a lot of, he was just a bad businessman. So he's, he's right that there's some depreciation in there and we talk about that in the story. It just can't account for all of this. The second part is 
they're saying that the information we have, you know, after he addresses the depreciation issue, he says the information's false. We've asked them to provide where, where it's false. Um, they can't, you know, secondly, when we mentioned in the story, our source who um, came to us, it's an IRS transcript that we have, also separately provided us with um, years of information on Fred Trump's tax returns. Because of previous reporting that we've done, we have numerous years of Fred Trump's tax returns and they haven't been published. The data that the source gave us matched line for line with the information our source gave us. We feel very comfortable in the, uh, the information we have and they haven't come to us to say this is wrong or that or that's wrong. They're just, you know, doing what they normally do, which is dismiss it, you know, full yeah. and not, not, not address the specifics. So Suzanne, how would you describe the claims that Donald Trump has made as a businessman versus what uh, your stories in the New York Times have uncovered? Well, we've written a lot about this, including, you know, this story today and the 18-month the investigation we did that concluded in, um, in October 2008 that looked at the origins of his wealth. And the idea that he is a self-made billionaire and he, you know, has spent a lot of his life promoting that and, you know, The Apprentice was based on it, he ran for president on it, it's a myth. It's uh, the origin, it's his, you know, the, sort of the foundational lie is what I call it. He inherited huge amounts of money from his father, some of it through tax fraud, and has not, you know, subsequently gone on. And the recent years are a separate issue, but he has had huge business failures, including losing tons of money the year he wrote Art of the Deal, his, you know, signature book on deal making and, you know, what a deal maker he is. Suzanne, interesting to speak to you today. Thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you. Suzanne Craig of the New York Times.